This was one of the fastest decisions I've ever had to make in my life, and I'm glad I made it when I did. So we stopped in Big Bear City, California on the way up to Salinas, California for the AOPA fly-in up there. We decided to deviate from our original plan of going into the Los Angeles area because of a low pressure system that was just off the coast throwing rain and IFR conditions into the Los Angeles basin. Big Bear seemed to be a good option because it has a well-reviewed cafe on the airport, cheap fuel, it's on our way, and it's an awesome looking mountain airport with VFR conditions contrary to the areas to the west like Los Angeles. We put a few gallons of gas in the airplane, keeping in mind our needed takeoff performance to get out of Big Bear, and then we went inside and had some lunch. Where are we at, Brandon? We're in Big Bear, California, bro. While we were in the cafe, the weather started rapidly changing just to our west, but we couldn't see it coming because of the placement of the cafe windows until it was almost too late. As soon as we noticed the weather was rapidly degrading, we finished our food, paid the check, and went outside to start pre-flight in the interest to not waste any time. We need to depart towards the east, which can be done one of two ways. We can either take off on runway 26 and make a left downwind departure at pattern altitude, or we can take off runway 08 and make a straight out departure down the canyon into the desert, which is where all the VFR weather is. Given these two options, we now have to figure out which one is going to be the safest and smartest. Just after we started the engine, we assessed the winds and the weather to make a decision. We noticed that the winds were out of the south, favoring a 160 degree heading, which gives us mostly a crosswind for both runways, which permits us to depart straight out to the east on runway 8, away from the bad weather behind us. Let's take a moment though to analyze the potential hazards in this situation for departures off both runways. The first potential hazard is both runways faced a light crosswind, according to the windsocks at least, which could easily turn into a tailwind at any given time unknown to us. For runway 26, that departure would have put us on a direct heading towards the IFR conditions. On the west side of the field, there are some fairly tall mountains which were beginning to become obscured by the clouds and fog that were rolling in, and we would have had to try and outclimb that terrain in the 172, which would have made it ridiculously unsafe when you can't see it. For me, flying near obscured terrain is an absolute no-go. Additionally, on the south side of the field, there were some pretty tall peaks which stood well above pattern altitude that were also obscured, and by taking off runway 26, that would have forced us to make a downwind departure right next to those invisible mountains. Trying to fly a standard pattern to depart the area clear of terrain also opens us up to a greater risk of inadvertently going into IMC, which would then become very dangerous around that terrain, and not to mention against regulations since there is no published IFR departure procedure for runway 26. The final hazard we made ourselves aware of was an air met for icing which existed in our area with a freezing level at 8,000 feet, which is only 200 feet above the pattern altitude for Big Bear Airport, so we need to take off in the direction that will take us away from all of the visible moisture, which would be runway 8. When comparing the pros and cons of each runway, it quickly became apparent to me that runway 8 was going to be the better choice. However, even though the wind was in our favor and wasn't very strong, it played a huge role in what's about to happen in the next few moments. Automated weather observation 2, 1, 3, 0, Zulu, weather, wind, 1, 6, 0, at 8, visibility, 7, 2, 1,000, 3, 100, scattered, ceiling, 2, 1,000, 8, 100, broken, 5, 1,000, overcast, temperature, 5, Celsius, dew point, minus 2, altimeter, 2, 9 -er, 8, 9 -er. Big Bear City traffic, Skyhawk 80991, taking runway 8. We're going to be making a departure to the northeast. Big Bear City. Transponded altitude, car peak cold. Uh, yeah, car peak cold. Mixture is set. Flaps 10. Fuel selector on both trim is set for takeoff.
Big Bear City Traffic Skyhawk 809 on one, making an aborted takeoff, runway 8, Big Bear City. That wind was not going to be nice to us. No, I know. No, I mean, you weren't getting the lift you needed. Big Bear City traffic, Skyhawk 80991 is clear of runway 8. 826, uh, Big Bear City. Yep. Flying in the mountains is full of challenges, and wind is one of the biggest. While taxiing out to the runway, we verified the wind on the AWOS to be 160 degrees at 8 knots, but during the takeoff roll, that is not at all what the wind felt like. As the Skyhawk started to accelerate down the runway after I released the brakes, the airspeed just didn't seem to be building very quickly at all. At first I gave it a chance to keep building because I mentally blamed it on the high elevation, but the airspeed was still taking a very long time to build up to just 60 knots. I finally gave the yoke a tug backwards to see if she'd fly, and it took some manipulating but the wheels finally left the ground. The airplane was very squirrely and hard to control, and looking at the airspeed indicator again I noticed it was very unstable. I had a glimpse of hope that the airplane was going to start climbing normally when I got a decent 2 or 3 seconds of a good climb rate, but then I immediately felt the climb cease and the airplane started to lose airspeed again. We didn't get but 25 feet above the ground and I took one last glance at the airspeed indicator and one last glance at the trees at the end of the runway and my decision was made. I'm aborting this takeoff. We discovered after taxiing off the end of the runway that the wind had made a huge change since the moment we went to full power. The wind was now stiff out of the west, which gave us a very strong tailwind during the attempted takeoff roll. After taxiing off the end of the runway, the snow started to fall and the rest of the day was socked in IFR, which meant we had to get a ride from the FBO manager to the local motel to stay for the night. I've seen way too many air crash investigations and read way too many NTSB reports to have let myself be so careless as to have tried to continue that takeoff. The last thing that ran through my mind right before chopping the throttle was that it's not worth it. I'd rather be stuck in Big Bear City overnight and live to fly another day than to risk facing what lies ahead of a poor judgment call. A huge lesson is to be learned from this. Pride can kill, and being a pilot in command means you must swallow your pride and make the right decisions, because those decisions will most likely save your life as well as your passengers. My airplane was quickly approaching the point of no return on that runway, and I knew exactly what the right decision was. I didn't stop to see what my instructor thought of it, I didn't ask permission, and I did not hesitate to err on the side of safety, so I made the executive decision to abort the takeoff without wasting another breath or another foot of precious runway. Fast decision making and good judgment are traits that all pilots must have, and I was grateful I was able to quickly use good judgment so I wouldn't have to test my good skills. Being a pilot is what I live for, but the responsibilities are endlessly humbling, and I laid my head down in a Big Bear City motel that night knowing that I'm still alive and well, the airplane is in one piece, and I will live to fly another day, all because I quickly made the right decision during those few critical seconds. If you like these videos, you can click subscribe to be notified whenever a new video is released every Monday. I'm also hosting a Patreon campaign, which is a great help when it comes to covering the costs of producing and editing these videos, so if you'd like to help out and support the channel, you can click on the Patreon logo or on the Patreon link in the description, and even donating one or two dollars per video makes a big difference. So until next time guys, I wish you blue skies and safe flying. Thank you for watching.